Wow, that was fast. iOS 12.1 Beta 1 has been released. Apple is wasting no time keeping the betas rolling. And honestly, I don't like this trend. iOS 12.1 should be signifying a very huge release and there are only a few changes inside, but still very interesting developments here. Anyways, I did update from iOS 11.4.1. It was a massive update, just like installing iOS 12 from the beginning before 244 gigabytes after 243, some did consume just a little bit. So what's new in this update and the number one thing is the return of group FaceTime. Apple did pull this ability to share FaceTime with up to 32 people in the final release of iOS 12. And this is the update that they promised they said it would be releasing in fall. So we should be seeing iOS 12.1 final release like October, November at the latest. And uh, yeah, group FaceTime is the name of the game here. But that's not all. There's actually more going on here. So developer Steve Trotton Smith actually shared these tweets and he found some deep hidden code within iOS 12 that suggests that horizontal FaceTime is making a play here. Apple is working on that and it's presumably for the new iPads. He did say that it would not be compatible with existing iPads due to the calibration of the sensors or whatnot. So that will be exclusive for a new iPad very likely. Now, it would have been cool if Apple added this ability to the new iPhones. The iPhone XS Max could especially use that horizontal view, but uh, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe they accidentally built that in. And by accidentally, I don't mean accidentally. He also did mention that iOS 12.1 one beta does have some sort of support for external displays, presumably again through the USB-C port on the new iPads. They are rumored to get the USB-C port, so that could happen. So iOS 12.1 will be bringing back group FaceTime, but at the same time could be working on the new iPads as well. And check this out, it goes deeper. And this is by the way, speculation, but code does suggest that further on in iOS 12.1, Apple could possibly release a feature that transcribes voice calls to iMessage style texts, and you can respond on a calls with a text. It would be some sort of accessibility feature and support for MFI game controllers to allow for clickable thumbsticks in iOS 12.1 is suggested. Now the Reaper respring bug in Safari still works. So it's been re-uploaded on a different site and iOS 12.1 still crashes the same way. So do be wary of any links sent to you as a prank. It can be fun for the first time, but after that, yeah, it gets annoying, um, but you don't have to click on these links. So really no harm here. Anyways, that is still active, likely in the next beta, Apple will patch that. All right, so I did notice that the Measure app seems to be more accurate in uh, iOS 12.1. Actually doing a little demo here, when I actually place it onto the iPhone, it actually effectively gets a little square of the display on the old one. It's always off a little bit. It's kind of strange here. It's like on point every single time. So it seems like the accuracy, oh, what's going on? And the accuracy of the measure app has been improved with 12.1. And taking a look at the release notes, this is what kind of ticked me off. Why do companies do this? This is a major number, 12.1 uh, point release. In iOS 11.1, we got some notable features. Here they said there are no notes or known issues for this software update. Okay guys, thank you for being very detailed. You're just like those developers that release an app update and it's huge and they list nothing in the changes. Or PS4 that just had a huge update, 6.0.0 and had like no changes inside. Why do companies do this? But I did want to mention that the release notes do have a new format now, so it's a lot cleaner, easier to read for future versions. So there it is, folks. I was 12.1 beta 1 with group FaceTime returning, hopefully to be released here within a couple months, and under the cover changes and updates for the new iPads, horizontal face ID, and external display support via USB C. That's rumored to happen. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. That's the latest. I'll keep you updated on any and all new changes. Oh, and sorry for the late update, guys. I have construction going on outside my house, and they cut my internet cable, so I wasn't able to upload this video for the longest time. Thanks guys, but also thank you Comcast for coming out here to fix it very quickly. Anyways, peace.